Hello and welcome to Japanese craft beer reviews. Uh, today we will look at the uh, begin looking at a series of beers and those beers are not Japanese. They are craft, uh, although some people are kind of feeling that at this point they are maybe becoming mainstream because they've tried too hard to be unusual, to be uh, indie, to be uh, everything that is not major major brewery beer. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second, but uh, this brewery is called Brewdog. Brewdog. And they have been around since 2007. They were founded by uh, two guys in the UK. They are a British brewery. I'm sorry, Scot well, a Scottish brewery, yes, uh, British. Uh, and they, uh, those two men are James Watt and uh, Martin Dickey, and they founded their brewery in Scotland. And uh, uh, they have, uh, they immediately uh, became known or famous, and I guess the word is notorious. Uh, notoriety is probably the word to use for their uh, approach to marketing. Um, they uh, immediately started out with some unusual names, uh, things like uh, like this beer, Dead Pony Club, um, uh, and they uh, actually uh, started uh, marketing, crowdfunding in 2011, and sell selling shares called Equity for Punks. Um, their uh, containers, uh, they they made they sold a beer in a, uh, a dead squirrel, or a, actually. A, piece of taxidermy, but a squirrel, you can find this online, holding the bottle for an outrageous price. Um, and they've had clashes with CAMERA, uh, the British Association for uh, to, uh, to uh, promote real ale. Uh, they've had clashes with CAMERA about uh, their, their attendance at uh, CAMERA festivals. And um, in any case, they're pretty well known uh, and they do export to a lot of different countries. Uh, they produce a lot of beer these days. In 2012, they moved to a new brewery in a place called Elon, E-L-L-O-N, in Scotland. And uh, they have five breweries around the world now. And they've even expanded into hotels. They have three hotels. I think two of them are in Columbus, Ohio, in the U.S. Um, and they have 78 bars around the world. So uh, wherever you are in a, in a maybe a major city around the world, there's a very good likelihood that you can find a brew dog bar. Uh, in Asia, uh, well, they opened one in Tokyo, uh, one in Seoul, and one in Shanghai. Uh, and I, in Tokyo was pretty early, 2008, uh, so right away. I'm sorry, no, that was a beer, never mind. Uh, I've never been to that one. Uh, they also got f famous for trying to brew the strongest beer in the world, and originally that was called Tokyo. I think it was around 8%, and that was in 2008. And then 2009, they brewed a beer called Tactical Nuclear Penguin. Kind of nonsense name. Uh, and uh, then they started getting into an uh, alcohol level uh, ABV war with a brewery called Schorsbrau and uh, producing beers and Schorsbrauch produced one at uh, 40% and then then uh, this is a German brewery so Brewdog uh, attacked them with a beer called Sink the Bismarck uh, <clears throat> of course which is a rallying cry, cry from England or from the UK during the war uh, Sink the Bismarck and that was at 50 54%, I believe. Uh, and now some other brewery, I can't remember the name, has come up with something, I think, around 60%. So it's kind of silly, but it gets attention. It gets, it's in the news. Um, I have to say, that there, so their beers, a lot of, there's been some pushback from, uh, uh, from uh, I think, the craft beer scene uh, for all this attention that they try to get uh, with their weird names and all these, these uh, stunts, actually, you could call them. Um, they make some wonderful uh, limited beers. Uh, they came. The uh, there was an event in Kyoto in 2013, uh, about seven years ago now, which I went to at a 
uh, one of the best craft beer bars at the time called Tigs. Uh, it was an Irish, run by an Irish man named uh, uh, Tig McLaughlin. And Neil Taylor, their representative, came and he brought a variety of beers. And then he had a selection of very limited, their limited beers like Abstract Series, uh, Dog B, uh, Coco Psycho, and, and so a variety of these uh, more expensive, very limited beers. And those are absolutely wonderful, um, you know, aged beers and uh, really extreme beers. So, in any case, we're going to look at a series of uh, brew dog beers, I believe. One, two, three, four, five, six different beers uh, from BrewDog that are available in Japan. And uh, we're going to start right now. The first beer is this one. It's called BrewDog Dead Pony Club. What is the name for? <gasps> what Tactical Nuclear Penguin. I mean, these are kind of nonsense names. And actually, they have uh, admitted that this name is simply to get attention, um, to uh, as they claim to challenge conventional naming, whatever that might be. Um, so again, it's a kind of stunt, uh, you know, a kind of unusual image that is created by this. Uh, on Rate Beer, this one has uh, 3,021 ratings, an average score of 3.64, uh, and 85 percentile uh, for all beers and 93 for its style. The style is uh, Session Pale Ale or India Session Ale. Uh, and this is only 3.8 percent, very sessionable, but it has 40 international bittering units, so it's up there a bit. Um, Untapped gives this, uh, they have 1,000, I'm sorry, 176,719 uh, ratings and an average of 3.56, just a, t uh, a touch lower than the rate beer level. Uh, the malt in this is crystal, extra pale, and cara malt. And the hops are Mosaic and Simcoe. And they use Simcoe in a lot of their beers. Uh, it's one of their favorite hops. Uh, I have had this before. I rated it in 2012, eight years ago. I'm not sure if I've had it since. Uh, and I gave it 3.1, not terribly high. But let's give this a go, shall we? So saddle up for session. Dead Pony Club. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know what you think, but uh, whoa, whoa, it's kind of gushing. <clears throat> I don't know about that. Why? Well, since BrewDog has such a presence around the world, uh, you would expect that their beers are probably sent fresh enough. And this one is, yeah, it's not, uh, Drink By is in August this year, so we're several months away. It was a little bit of a surprise. Um, in any case, whatever you think about the attention-grabbing uh, notoriety, um, the beer is what counts, and let's take a look at this one. Okay, so it is a slightly hazy, and actually a lot of the haze is caused by this tremendous carbonation rising. You can see that there, I believe. So it's really, really buzzing up. And it's got a solid finger of off-white head. Okay, in the nose. Okay, it is grassy. Something like sage. Some kind of definitely a weedy, a weedy sort of greenness to it. Almost something like Italian herbs mixed in here. Okay, the hops come right out. The mosaic and the Simcoe. Nice blend. They're blended well together. Uh, Mosaic and Simcoe are very distinctive hops, uh, and they've blended these quite well, I think. It, uh, it's definitely a hop juicy sort of uh, flavor. Malt is definitely taking a back seat here. Refreshing, kind of snaps off the tongue, ends up dry. 
very pleasant beer. Um, yeah, I think I would give this a higher rating now than I did eight years ago. Maybe somewhere around uh, maybe 3.4, 3.5 out of 5, something like that, perhaps. Closer to the rate beer average or the untapped average, I think, now. So uh, I'm glad I revisited this. And you should visit it sometime, too, if you'd like. Uh, again, it's called uh, Brew Dog Dead Pony Club. Uh, this is a uh, India uh, session ale, uh, session pale ale at 3.8% and 40 international bittering units. So if you've never tried Brew Dog, you probably should. Uh, and if you've tried Brew Dog, you probably have an opinion about them. Uh, so I won't tell you anymore. That's it for today. Okay, stay on, and we're going to look at a few more Brew Dog beers. I hope you tune in. Bye bye.